How's it going folks? I'm Graham Boyd, Xbox Live's AC Bongos, and I'm here with Dice's Daniel Berlin to ask the questions about Battlefield 1 that you, the community, need answered. So let's get straight into it, Daniel. Let's do First it. of all, Battlefield 1, we know it's set in World War 1, but what else differentiates it from the other Battlefield games that we know and love? The thing that comes to mind first is that setting and how many opportunities in terms of gameplay that this setting gives us. For example, you will have horses running side by side with, with tanks, for example. And it's kind of the coolness of having um, the old world, you know, with sabers and horses and that type of stuff, and combining that with this new industrial era that just kind of swept over this war. And because of this, we can just look at all these things and it's like almost like a smorgasbord of stuff. And you say, like, okay, we want that in the game, we want that in the game. And the mixing of that stuff really creates a really different gameplay flavor, I think. And now, a lot of people think of World War One. they think of the Western Front, right, and trench warfare. Yeah, they you do. guys are really taking it far beyond that. Tell me about yeah. some of the different environments, the different type of maps we'll see in Battlefield. Mm, yeah, but that is the thing. It's just like there is this misconception. It's like a lot of people think that this is, this is what it was, but it is a world war. Yeah. It's, a, it's a war on a global scale. You will be going into the uh, Italian Alps, high up in the mountains, and clearing out bunkers and forts and trenches. and. You'll be uh, inside like dense cities. Uh, you'll be in smaller villages. Every time you come into a map, it feels different, it looks different, but it also plays very different because there's a different terms of gameplay as well. Now, when you've got 64 players, you've got a lot of destruction. There Tell is a lot of destruction, <laughs> yes. You can basically level that town. It's completely crazy, and there's a lot of different ways to cause destruction. We're actually incorporating a new ground information system as well. So not just like the building destruction, at places we have open fields where if, if you try to traverse them in the beginning it's going to be like oh yeah i'm getting sniped but as the battle goes on and as shells and explosions hit this terrain it basically transforms into a swiss cheese and the players can now use these craters as cover you can actually you know utilize the tanks or the field guns or any types of large explosions to create these craters and then utilize them to move towards your objective yeah. And the first conflict where air warfare played a massive part mm. as well. Yeah. How did you have to change the air combat given that you're now working with biplanes and triplanes with fabric wings yeah. rather than jet fighters? Mm. Actually, I personally, I have never had more fun playing air battles in a battlefield game because you'll be able to engage in these really cool dogfights with other players as well. But the connection between the air and the ground is a little bit tighter. So you'll be able to get into, for example, a two-seater that has two seats, basically. So you can have yourself um, at the front driving, shooting, and also bombing. Um, you can have a friend sitting at the back, you know, if there's another pilot chasing you, so he can shoot at him. So there's, like, there's really cool dynamic moments when uh, you play together with your team in the air as well. And we've seen some massive vehicles as well. Yeah. Airships and armored trains. Yes. How do they play in Battlefield 1? So these are huge effects on terms of turning the tide in the battle. The way we utilize them is that if a team, for example, is being a little bit steamrolled, they will get these massive behemoths to be able to, you know, get back into the game and turn the tide. When you're standing on the ground and you hear the horn of, this, of the, the airship coming in, a lot of people that play for the first time, they just stop and they just look at it and it goes like, okay, what's this thing gonna do? Well, thanks, Daniel, but unfortunately, that is all the time we have here today. Make sure you follow DICE and Battlefield and Xbox on Twitter for all the latest Battlefield 1 news. I just want to say thank you to Daniel again for your time today. And don't forget that you can play Battlefield 1 first on Xbox One starting October the 13th with EA Access. Thank you for watching. Play it first on Xbox One with EA Access.